Welcome back to our uh, welcome back to our little program we do for you here Monday through Thursday, and we're awfully glad you're here with us tonight. You ready, Paul? It's a pleasure to uh, finally welcome uh, our first guest to this show. He is often called the funniest comedian of our time, and he can currently be seen in a brand new motion picture entitled Critical Condition. Please say hello to and welcome Richard Pryor. Thank you very much for being here. This is very exciting. I was backstage with Richard Dominic. He's uh, so, oh, man, just, he blew me away. I'll just. <laughs> uh, we'll get to him in a second. Okay. <laughs> I, I've known you for a long, long time. I don't know if you've known me for a long, long time, but I've known you. I met you years and years ago, and I don't know if you remember that or not. At the comedy store. The comedy store. I remember that. And my, and my first encounter with you, I, I have a really vivid recollection of that. One night I was emceeing, and you were going to go on, and I went up to you. You didn't know who I was, and I introduced myself, and I said, how would you like to be introduced uh, when I get up on stage? And you, you told me, and we shook hands. And for the rest of the night, I had this wonderful, wonderful scent of what I assumed was really, really expensive cologne on my hand, and I thought, this man is very, very successful. <laughs> it was, I've not had anything like that uh, since, and I was oh. mightily impressed by that. Well, it healed up. <laughs> it's all better now, so you won't get it no more. When you, uh, <laughs> when, now when you come back to New York, do you, do you, does this bring back a lot of exciting memories for you? It, like When you come back to New York and you haven't been here for a while, you realize how big it is. Mm -hmm. It's like very big and people are moving all the time. They don't stop for nothing. Yeah. They just go, 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 go. I can't wait to get back in the hotel and go. <gasps> Because yeah. I'm guessing when you go out on the streets, people are just, just want to be all over you, don't they? No. <laughs> no. No, they don't. They don't bother me. At all. I'm with my son, so they, I'm, I'm bothering with him, so yeah. they don't bother with me yeah. very much. Sometimes they should. Yeah. Should they bother me? Well, I, I would think that you're the kind of guy that people are drawn to, and when you're out in, in public, that they would want to get up there and, and shake your hand and, and pat you on the back and stuff. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, <Dave. laughs> no, uh, well, don't let it. But it doesn't happen to me, so don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but you, you worked here in clubs when you were a I kid here starting at the out. Cafe Wa. Yeah. That was the first club in the. It's still in the village, maybe. I don't know if there's still a village, is it? <laughs> I don't. Is the Cafe Wa still down there, Paul? Yeah, I was just hanging out there uh, the other night. Uh, down in the village. I don't think it is. Yeah. And you, you started doing television from New York. I started doing, I did the first show I did was called Entertainment Tonight. Uh, it was a summer replacement show. What network was that? That was CBS. Mm -hmm. Like an, an hour variety kind of deal? Yeah, it was in yeah. the summer. And I, Rudy Valley was the host. And I got on that show, and then Merv Griffin saw a tape of that, and he let me come on his show every night for about six years. Is that right? Yeah. And you did you, did you also do the Ed Sullivan show here? Yeah, I did Ed Sullivan too. Yeah. Now, do you have Ed Sullivan? <laughs> No, I just remembered, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It comes back every now and then. Do, you, and <laughs> do you have any uh, uh, special uh, stories about Ed Sullivan? Seems like everybody who did the show has a... I know. I remember Ed Sullivan came up to my dressing room. I did nine minutes, and the people just freaked, said, <gasps> you can't do that. And I went up to his room. He said, well, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to do all nine minutes. I do the worst Ed Sullivan, as you can see. But... <laughs> He was a nice man to me. So he lets you go ahead and do the nine minutes on the mm -hmm. show? Yeah. And how many times were you on that program? I think uh, about maybe 11, 12, something like that. Yeah. Do you, do you uh, at this stage of your life, do you miss doing stand-up on a regular basis? I know you I do stand it. Stand-up in clubs, I miss a lot. I miss a lot. I haven't been on the road in a while. I want to go after my next film. Mm -hmm. I like to get back and do a concert so you can get in front of people and they can ask you, you know, where'd you get them shoes? <laughs> 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 And what, and what do you tell them when they ask you about the shoes? I throw it at them. Say, yeah. here, <laughs> you smell it. What do you think? <laughs> Can I have it back now? Thank you. But that's, it's, it's tough work, isn't it? I think that I the, love it. You do love, I love it? I love it. And you do six months of that. 
it's great because I did films at concerts. I mean, I'm not putting it down or nothing. I'm glad the concert films were successful, but they weren't complete. Mm -hmm. You know how you finish it, and then you say, but there was more to do if I just worked on it more. But they offer you so much money, you can't go, no, yeah. I don't want it. Yeah. Take that check and stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me grab it. So, give me that. Thank you very much. You know, right? What about, uh, um, and I don't know that this would happen to you, but, but what about hecklers? If you're working in a club or even in a concert? I have two guys. They take care of the hecklers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't get no real bad hecklers. No, not no serious hecklers. Most of the hecklers I get, people add to the act. Uh -huh. You know, I don't get nobody who just takes it out. Yeah. So it doesn't bother you if somebody does that then. Mm -hmm. There's a line. I know. Yeah. 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 A very thin line. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you, would you ever see yourself doing like a a, a massive concert tour or just picking one night? I'd like to do name? like I'd like to do about 20 cities or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'd love to do that. Yeah. I really would, man. I really enjoy it a lot. Yeah, it'd be a hot ticket. Be what? a good deal. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Then we're, let's let's uh, we'll do a we'll do a commercial here, and uh, we're going to talk some more with Richard before we bring out Mr. Dominic. But he'll be here. Don't worry about it. Pryor <laughs> is here tonight. What when you were first uh, starting to do nightclub work? I guess back in Illinois in that area. Yes. Yeah. What what were the acts of the day aside from yourself? You, I guess worked as a comedian and maybe an MC sometimes. Yes. MC what what kind comedian. of stuff would you appear with? I'd appear with uh, strip dancers. There was be one strip dancer, and then a singer, and then an MC. I'd do the MC mm -hmm. or the jokes yeah. as it were, and then they alternate every week to be a different show. But I got to stay three or four weeks because this guy at this club yeah. liked me. Was there anything, uh, uh, you go to one city or uh, one act would come in that would be a little more bizarre than others, or was it pretty much... There was a flame dancer I worked with one time. She was great. And you used to do a thing in the, in the, in the black theater. It was called Burying the Show. At the, at, at the end of the engagement, the last night, everybody would do everybody else's act. Mm -hmm. And they'd bury the show. And this guy one time, we was doing the flame dancer. and. The, the MC would be the woman. She'd put on a mustache, and she'd come out and do the jokes. And then the other girl would sing, and it was great. Yeah. It was, it, it, as a matter of fact, there's a scene like that in uh, uh, the JoJo Dancer, right? Yes. Yeah, when well, you're working the club. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you, man. It was good nice to, to see you. Show. I appreciate you coming here. Thank you me. know, I saw the other night uh, they were running uh, an old variety series that you did on NBC. That yes. was on the air. How, how many weeks did that last? Uh, seven weeks or something like that. Seven weeks, mm -hmm. and it was at the time it was a really big deal, uh, and it was with a, a lot of guys that uh, you and I both knew, yes. a lot of mutual friends, oh, yes. and uh, and it was pretty in interesting stuff that you guys were doing then. And I guess this is a, a photograph from the first show. <laughs> yes. Explain what we're looking at there, and that's a, a thing I wanted to do, but the NBC censors cut it out. Yeah. And. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was standing there, I say, as you can see, and you only see me from the waist, just this part. So right. You, as you can see, I've given up absolutely nothing to be on television. <laughs> and they pull back, and you can see I and, have no and genitals. And there you are, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, was that show, was that a constant battle with those, what, what year was this? This was, uh... Oh, it was back 1970-something. <laughs> <laughs> was it a constant struggle to, to uh, keep that thing? Uh... It was a constant struggle in the sense of, like, we'd do stuff, and the censor would come into the dress rehearsal and go, hold it, you can't do that, please. And I'd go, well, we'll do something else. And you keep trying, and more yeah. you, if once you step with them, they keep stepping until you end up with nothing. Yeah. Like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I wonder now if, if things are, are any different no, they don't care now. <laughs> I, I, anything goes now? Yeah. I just, I want, I, I'm guessing certain things would be the same, other things might be a little different. But I think, you know, the pendulum goes one way and then it swings back way and you maybe don't really gain I much imagine television is different. I, I guess I, have, I don't do it, so I don't know. I really don't. Well, go ahead and test them tonight, Richard. See test what them. No, 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 no. Oh, hey. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> what other kind of things did you do before you were in show business or when, when you were uh, maybe not doing show business full time? Other kind I'd of be, jobs? Be depressed a lot. And yeah. <laughs> good money in that. <laughs> yeah. I was depressed a lot. I tried to be a thief for a while. Mm -hmm. I wasn't good at that. What kind of things were you thieving? I, I, would, I was second story man. Yeah? Yeah, I'd climb over transits, because I was the skinniest one in the gang. They yeah. let me do the climbing over the transit. And you're in there looking for appliances, or jewelry, or cash, or what? Uh, I didn't know. I'd just get over there and say, <laughs> I'd go, I'm in! <laughs> what I do now? <laughs> How long were you uh, a thief like that? Until uh, my father found out. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
he ended my thievery career yeah. real quick. Yeah. Uh, in the in in the movie here, Critical Condition, you you're uh, a guy playing a doctor. You're not really a doctor, though. No, right? no, he's a guy that's a businessman. He gets in a bad situation, and they think he's a cop. And to keep from going to penitentiary, he tries to fake insanity so he can go to a mental institution. And while there, there's a blackout. And they think he's the doctor in charge. Yeah. And he takes over like that. He yeah. don't know what he's doing. Yeah. And you're, like you're running the show, though. Yeah. 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 Do, do we have some of that here? Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, we have time for this? Uh, it's a minute or so from uh, Richard Pryor's latest film entitled uh, Critical Condition. Here he is now. Hello. Dr. Slattery, here's what we have to start is we have a roof worker that fell down in the storm. He hasn't been x-rayed. He's in the trauma room. We have a guy that's been struck by lightning. We have a possible labor, not sure. No husband, six kids, all here now. We have a broken leg in the cast room. And when you're done with that, we need to get a doctor to deal with the detox ward because the medicine men are screaming for their medicine. What a cute coat. Well, thank you very much. What well, seems to be the trouble? Oh, well, it hurts all over. Doctor, make it all better. Stop that interest in being a doctor? None whatsoever. Yeah. Never did have an interest in it, but I, I like them. I think it's amazing. They go to school eight years, you know, at least, mm -hmm. and then people don't want to pay their bills. That tickles me. I mean, <laughs> you know, you do something on them, the guy goes, I ain't going to pay that much. You know, <laughs> then you break the other arm or something. Let me, uh, uh, you're married again, Richard. Yeah, Dave. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Where, where did you, uh, <laughs> Where did you meet your wife? I met my wife in Washington, D.C. about a million years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she was there. I was doing a concert. And I met her, and I liked her right away. Yeah. And we talked and became friends. That's good. And uh, so we got married. How old a woman do we have here? She's about, well, the school bus was late taking her home the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Richard. No, she's 23. <laughs> she's 23. Yeah, and I got my son with me. She now, wait me... a minute. What? <laughs> now, how old a man are you? I'm 46. 46, so yeah. she's half your age. She's half my age, so? <laughs> no, nothing. I'm... No, I mean, she's smart as me. She's smarter, actually, yeah. I think. Yeah. She knows a lot of stuff. She's a good person. She has a lot of... A lot of good ideas, and she's lovely, and I'm happy when I'm with her. Well, there you go. See? Uh, sometimes. I'm sorry, sometimes? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, what, what's the woman's name? Flynn. Flynn. And she, is she in town with you? No, she's in California. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to meet her. Well, she told me to bring our son. She said, oh, you're going to New York by yourself? Take our son! <laughs> you know, so my son's two, I brought him, and he's watching me taking notes. Uh -huh. you know. It, Mom, does he have anything to say about New York or probably just he, another... He don't care. Yeah, doesn't care. You know, he just wants to say a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier to you in the, in the dressing room, but I really do appreciate you coming to visit us because uh, it's a big thrill for us, and uh, we've wanted to have you for the longest time, and just come back anytime. I'm happy that you had me here, and God bless you, and good luck. Good luck with the film. Thank you. 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 Thank you.